Traditionally, graphics chips had fixed sets of hardware resources dedicated to doing certain functions. Only last year, ATI's shapely mascot, Ruby, was made out of 80,000 triangles. Generating Ruby in real time required the usual mix of pixel and vertex shaders, shaders being program pipelines built into the GPU hardware. Each shader was capable of X amount of work in a given cycle, and 80,000 polygons in a character was what you could expect from the best chips of 2006. The Ruby of 2007 is built from 200,000 triangles. This reflects the massive leap in graphics processing efficiency and performance enabled by AMD's new ATI Radeon HD2000 architecture. The trouble with old fixed function shaders was that an application might need a bunch of work done with vertex shaders and not much work done with pixel shaders, so all of that dedicated pixel shader circuitry would sit around idle. With the different GPUs in the HD2000 family, the old shader concept is swept aside and replaced with stream processors. Stream processors are fully programmable, meaning they can perform any type of shader task on demand. With the 320 stream processors built into AMD's HD2900 chip, if an application needs all of them to crunch on pixel shader routines, that's no problem. It's a much more efficient design. Programmable shaders and heavy-duty memory handling are the muscles behind AMD's cutting-edge graphics capabilities. Prior generation GPUs had the bandwidth for 1 million triangles in a scene. With the HD2900, there's now enough overhead for 2 million triangles, giving environments more impact and immersive realism. Last year's Ruby had a face with four morph targets, meaning four expressions that she could move between. Ruby rendered for the HD2900 has 128 facial morph targets, giving her a whole new level of subtlety and cinematic realism. But more bandwidth isn't just about bigger numbers. This new GPU design lets application developers achieve depth of realism in ways that previously couldn't be done in real time with consumer graphics. Here you can see the fur on Ruby's hood moving according to head motion and wind. This is now computed as a procedure where one piece of hair is multiplied hundreds or thousands of times and the group is influenced dynamically by other factors in the scene. Using new physics algorithms, thousands of elements in an environment like icicle fragments or explosion debris can bounce off of nearby objects just as they would in the real world. Procedural techniques enabled by the HD2000 also show up in areas like landscape generation. Until recently, the best approach to making, say, mountains was to model terrain from scratch. Unfortunately, these images were static, unable to interact with other factors in their environment. The horsepower in the HD2000 GPU series not only allows for on-the-fly deformation of terrain, but also the ability to apply direct X-based procedures like snow deposition. The amount of snow is dynamic, plus it accumulates in a natural, realistic way according to the shapes within the landscape. These capabilities weren't possible in consumer GPUs a year or two ago and can now be done with very little impact on other system resources. Another nifty way the HD2000 series helps to increase realism is through its tessellation engine. Tessellation is the process of subdividing polygons, usually to create smoother surfaces that are then combined with displacement maps. There are different ways to do tessellation, but the object is to dramatically increase object polygon counts and scene realism without swamping the GPU. Performance advances like these are part of what make the HD2000 family so compelling for anyone doing 3D graphics, but there are plenty of other innovations in this generation that can call out to any type of user. First on the list is support for DirectX 10, Microsoft's latest set of programming tools for making multimedia more detailed and lifelike. You can run Windows Vista without hardware support for DX10, but with the whole industry moving to the new graphics model, why would you? The additional realism of DirectX 10 is stunning. Whether you're talking Adobe Acrobat designers or flight sim fans, DX10 is for everyone, and AMD is delivering it, starting for under $100. The HD2000 family also puts its programmable architecture to work in new features like Custom Filter Anti-Aliasing, or CFAA. Anti-aliasing is the process of averaging the color values within jaggies to help smooth out object edges. Old school approaches would let you take multiple samples within a pixel in order to get a good average color value, but you could only sample out to each pixel's borders. 
AMD's programmable CFAA algorithms let you sample however far beyond these borders you want, optimizing realism and sharpness for each application or scene. Let's talk product groups within the HD2000 GPU lineup. The entry-level Radeon HD2400 consumes less than 25 watts of power and often features silent passive cooling. Even with 40 stream processors and up to 256 megabytes of GDDR3 memory, HD2400 cards require no auxiliary power. This is a great upgrade for users who want a lot more bang than integrated graphics without paying very many bucks. The HD2600 is the sweet spot in the center of AMD's family, with 120 stream processors, support for GDDR2, 3, or 4, and a 128-bit memory bus, you get loads of horsepower for under $150. Also note that the 2400 and 2600 groups integrate AMD's latest video and display processing technologies, collectively known as a Vivo HD. A Vivo HD makes both standard and high-def video look sharper and more vibrant, plus GPU hardware does the decode heavy lifting for a wide range of video codecs, so CPU resources aren't bogged down. This is especially true for H.264 and VC1 formats. The decoder for high definition video is built in the chip, so that means you don't have to have the world's most high-end CPU to do Blu-ray or HD DVD decode. You can actually build a really nice media center system with a 2400 card, fanless, so it's quiet and it's cool, uh, and a small form factor, something you'd put in an entertainment rack. That's a great example of something you can do different with the 2400 card. When fractions of seconds count, when users need to frag like mad, there's the Radeon HD2900, outfitted with 320 stream processors and at least 512 megs of GDDR3 memory. The HD2900 delivers best-in-class performance at a price point most enthusiasts prefer. If you want the sweetest rig around running Vista, take two Radeon HD2900 XT cards, run them on a 580 chipset motherboard, and soon to be the uh, 790 chipset, and you'll blow away our competitor's highest end card for a lot less money. The HD2000 series offers display outputs ranging from VGA to a pair of dual-link DVI connectors. For cards that only offer DVI output, AMD has designed the industry's first DVI to HDMI adapter able to carry an audio stream alongside the video. To do this, AMD had to incorporate an HD audio controller into the HD2000 architecture. When HDMI is connected, AMD's drivers tell the PC to bypass regular integrated or sound card hardware, so Vista Premium requirements stay observed. Now, users can either run a single cable to their HDMI-equipped amplifiers, or, if they don't have HDMI, they can run HDMI video to their flat panels while taking the audio from traditional SPDIF or analog ports. No matter which HD2000 GPU you pick, owners can count on great 3D performance, impeccable image quality, easy multi-monitor support, and a heap of video acceleration extras suitable anywhere from the boardroom to the living room. AMD is always preaching about giving buyers more for their money. With the HD2000, we think they delivered.